Pimp C always made me want to want to do better. Like like he always, I could never satisfy him all the way, and that made me want to make more harder music, you know. And he told me that after years and years. He said, like, like, like I would bring something in there, he'd be like, it's all right. You know, that motherfucker all right. Even with my bitches, I would bring around, you know. <laughs> the bitch feet, the bitch feet ain't right, you know, shit <laughs> like that. So, you know, he always used to tell me when I used to bring him the music, he wasn't doing that to be arrogant with me. He was doing that to make me stronger. He was doing that to make me say that's not my best and keep on going. You know, I would know this motherfucker jamming. He would walk in there and it's all right. And walk out smoking his, you know. So, you know, that made me uh, go back in the studio and try to keep better. So he made me a hog, man. He, he made me, he made me, I could never please him. So if, if you keep on trying to do better, you're going to keep doing better. And now I use that same tactic with my artists. I use the exact same tactic with my artists. It could be a motherfucking smash hit. I'm going to come in there. It's all right. It's all right. And walk out the house. Don't even give them time to come talk to me. You know, if I would have had a, I wish I would have made a single in 99, I would have been where I'm at. But I never could make singles. I always made good street music that you, I basically got my deal on people calling up to New York like, you got to sign this guy. This guy is selling 80, 90,000 records with no single. So I basically got a deal on making quality, good music. You know, I didn't get a deal on on a single, you know, uh, basically we had to create that single. Young Jock was the hottest in the game, you know, so I was basically like, I'm just trying to ride this coattail and keep it real. I'm just trying to get Jock on the record and zoom. It's Tom Cruise on the couch doing it, so I'm just trying to ride this coattail. You know, I, I, I always had a tr problem with making singles because I'm not a single type of guy. I never needed the radio to blow me up. I'm a, I'm a street legend, like I never needed the radio to to blow me out the roof, even though I made radio records afterwards, but I never needed the radio to prove myself. You know, I got a deal based on people calling up there to New York, like, if you, if you don't take a chance with them, you're gonna lose. And you know, the, you know my, my first album, Badass, you know, did four, four, three, four, four hundred thousand units. I had A Bay Bay remix video on BET, I had Out Here Grinding with DJ Khaled, I had Wipe Me Down. It just started taking off nationally, like, uh, I was going places that I wasn't going before, you know, I was going, performing in Alaska, you know, and, and, these, and these places sold out, you know, so, uh, it took, the, the national album, you know, I had, I had, a, I had a major distribution in, so people was hearing my music, a lot of people was like, you know, when they first heard the album, like, man, this guy, he, he got some nice music. And then that made people backtrack. And that's what got that's what really got my fans. When they was like, oh six, damn, he been out seven years. Why we ain't heard him? You know what I'm saying? But that that badass album took me nationally. It took me it took me places I'd never been before. And it opened up people's eyes. What's your relationship with Trill itself? Um, I guess I guess how I guess, how do you kind of fit into, you know, Trill Entertainment? Because it's not the same Trill that was in 06. Right. Uh, well, basically, I'm like the, the, the head honcho, man. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm the one, I'm the one moving, moving doing, doing what he got to do. Uh, so right now, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a lot focused on my badass music and syndicate, but I'm still over here, too. Uh, right now, uh, we finna get Webby back up and running. We trying to drop his Savage Life 5 next month. Getting him a, we gonna probably lose Problem as his single. But uh, right now it's still good business. Right now, you know, at, at first it was shaky business, you know. But when we came out, like, you know, we reconstructed the deal. You know, I got what I wanted, you know, so it came out smooth, man. It, it's, it's business, you know? Cause you know, it seems like a lot of stuff is going on while you were in jail. Right. With Trill, from you know the charges that Turkey Mel had, right, and even you know far as the murder of Lil Fat, right. I guess how are you dealing with that while you were in prison? I was like, man, bro, like, I was just like, man, we going through it. I was like, man, we going through it. Uh, when Turk them beat they charge, I was smiling. You know, I was sitting in my cell. I was on death row then. I was smiling, man. I was so happy, you know. 
I was like, we beat them bitches, you know. I was, I was smiling, I was happy as shit. Uh, but when Fat died, I was like, damn, bro, here we go again, you know. Uh, then Webby was spiraling out of control. That was pissing me off, you know. That was, I was getting, I was getting so angry in there, man. I was getting, they try to ban Webby from BET. I was just getting so angry in there because I wanted to be by his side and, and strengthen him, man. You know, I just felt like when I left, you know, Webby ain't have his his sidekick with him, bro. You know, um, I ain't like how I ain't like how people was trying to shit on my dude. Period. You know, he a star, man. Um, you know, everybody go through it, and I ain't like that shit at all, man. You know, so when Fat died, I was like. You know, uh, rest in peace, Fat. I was like, you know, we just going through it right now. I feel you. So you know, you talk. About, you know, you kind of just kind of gave a, uh, a look into what was going on, you know, outside. Uh, I guess how did even me and jail something like you know affect you know just you know your family outside? Because I know one of the first videos that I found funny was the whole you know. I told y'all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess, you know, how did that kind of feel? I guess, what was going on, you know, on the outside? Like, was that kind of difficult to deal with? Because it's kind of like you're not there. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it was hard because, uh, you know, my kids, every birthday, every every Christmas, they, they got everything. But without me, they wasn't all the way happy. You know, like, you can give them what they want. They ain't got their daddy, you know, like. I used to flood them with stuff for their birthday to try to replace that, and they still come up there and not talk about their birthday so much, but when you come at home, you know? So, you know, with it, money is not everything, you know? Money is not everything, that's what I learned. You know, I, I couldn't make my kids totally happy without me being there by their side. And, you know, it affected my whole family, man. It made my family argue with each other. You know, cause I'm I'm the, I'm the go getter in my family. Like I'm the I'm the rock of my family. I take care of a lot of people. Okay. So you know, you mentioned your partner crying Webby. Yeah. He, he was spiraling out of control. Yeah. Um, I guess what's that working relationship with him now? Um, and will we ever see a, a ghetto story sequel? Uh, I want to. I want to. Uh, I what? want to. With, with with me and him working, uh, we just got just got to get him in the studio and and get them focused. You know, once we get in the studio, we're gonna make magic, period. Uh, we're a hell of a combination. Um, but when I work with them, it, it's just like, you know, it, it bring all the memories back. We done been through so many memories together. So, you know, we're gonna try to, we, we, we trying to get in here and work on this gangster music too. Cause the world wants the gangster music too. Uh, we're gonna try to get in here and work on that. And uh, I'm ready. I'm ready. I, uh, you know, and right now we're putting together, putting us on the same venues right now to build that hype again. Uh, we just dropped the problem uh, video. We got another video we finna drop. And uh, we coming. We coming. You know, we, I love to do a ghetto story too. Uh, but right now I'm focusing on my movie, my life story movie. After the March Project, Thug told me and see murder dropping the album called Penitentiary Chances. That's dropping April 15th. Uh, May, I'm gonna come with the national album. May or June, I'm gonna come with the, the Big Atlantic album. Um, Boosie Badass, Bigger and Badder Than Ever. So, uh, I just got them lined up, man. I got, I got so much music. How was that? How we did it? I can't say, because he's in jail. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we made it happen. Uh, we, gotta, we, gotta, we made it happen. We recorded a CD. Uh, it's called Penitentiary Chances, and uh, it's basically what we was going through, man. Like, what's it like watching this case? This case oh, his case is bullshit, man. I read his case, man. Yes, and they has nothing on him, but he say, she say. Hmm. You know, he had he was he was tall with goals in his mouth. You know how many damn people tall with goals in their mouth in New Orleans? <laughs> you know, uh, no gunpowder residue on his hands. You know. Bad case, man. He just made, you know, just he just see murder. You know, he made an example out. Try to make an example out of him. You know, he been fighting for 14, 15 years, and his case is. But he's in a bad parish, Jefferson Parish, who hates him. Uh, he had another case in Baton Rouge that they kept showing on the news, 
that I felt like his lawyers shouldn't even let them show that because that's what really got him convicted. His case they were showing on the news, but uh. You talking about your footage? Yeah, yeah, Club Rags, right? yeah, at Club Rags. That's what. Like he wasn't even on trial for that, hmm. you know. And you showing this on every time his trial come up, you know. To a jury, you just painted that picture. This has nothing to do with. What happened at this uh, bowling alley or whatever this shit is, you know? So, uh, I just, he, he was, he, 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 he got the bad, he got the bad end, bro. But, uh, I think Master P back on his team and, uh, they got, they're getting some people from the Shapiro uh, law firm. And, uh, we're gonna try to get him out. We're gonna fight for him because I want to see him home, bro. Because, you know, he was my bed partner for two and a half years. And, and when you, when you, when you cl that close to somebody for that long, he become like your brother, man. You know, y'all with each other every day. We worked we work together. Our jobs were together. Yeah. Both of us worked in the kitchen. Uh, and I just won't see them home, man. You know, and Louisiana got a bad, bad judicial system, man. They sock it to you, man. Like, so what's the plan for, you know, the big Atlantic album? Atlantic album. Um, I guess, I know, you, I know you gotta be working with some heavy hitters. Uh, I just did a record last night that I want to get Rihanna on. It's called uh, Do What I Want To. I'm thinking about leaking it on the uh, internet and, and, and hashtagging Riri if I can't get if, if Atlanta can't get up. But uh, <laughs> uh, I got another record I won't put Justin Bieber on. It's just you know, it's just me. I think I feel like if I can get in contact with these artists without management involved, it can go down. But uh, I just feel like you know a lot of people be skeptic about working with Boosie. You know, I, I don't I don't know why. Uh, but I don't know if they, they feel like I'll put a bad image on them, a uh, 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 rough guy image on them, but I like, to, I like to get in touch with people and be direct contact with them. When managers, when the middleman gets involved, that's when the problems come. You know, like if, if, if both of us get money, we, can, we should be able to talk on the phone with each other and make this happen. But uh, there's a lot of people I won't work with on the album, but if not, you know, I'll, I don't need no one, you know. I don't, <laughs> I don't need no one. I, every, every song I have that I want a verse on, I have an extra verse to put on it just in case they don't get on it. I always do that. Like before I even, I don't just leave the verse open. I'm gonna knock that verse out and I'll just, okay, you don't make it, you play games with the paperwork, fine.